the one who is watching our portfolio committee today. Greetings to you all. Uh, please bear with me. My voice is not so good. Uh, I am coming from a bout of flu, so that is why my voice is like this. I hope that I'm audible enough. As you all know that uh, in the last few weeks, we have been dealing with our expropriation bill number 23 of 2020. We interacted with it clause by clause. We invited the legal services from the department to respond on the questions that the members had asked and were given answers. Um, we also invited them after having dealt with clause by clause, we also invited the parliamentary services. In fact, they have been with us. The office of the chief state law advisor, they have been with us through all this journey. So today, the parliamentary legal services will present to us the bill and the um, responses that we have got from the department. And let's see, how do we move forward with the bill as in preparation for us to adopt the bill and then uh, it will be then presented to parliament. So it will, it will be today the parliamentary legal services that will be uh, dealing with us. You are again a welcome all our members in this meeting and, and those that are watching our meeting. And as I know that this, this portfolio committee always has a robust um, discussions in all that we do. I am also expecting this today. Um, over to you, Ms. Nola. Do we have any apologies today? Ms. Martinisa? Uh, I think she has left the meeting maybe due to, um, maybe due to Network challenges. Uh, Ms. Martinez is no longer here. Uh, we will maybe even uh, after get the, the apologies of those that are here, those that are not here, those that will join later the meeting, uh, but Ms. Martinez is not here. The host now is Khadija, no longer Ms. Martinez, so we won't get the apologies. Uh, can we get someone? Yes, Ms. Martinez. Yes, thank do you. Do you have an apology? Yes, we do. I, I apologize, as, as you said, I had network challenges, so I had to leave the meeting and come back in because I couldn't hear the audio. Um, all right, the apologies that we have, um, one is that of Honorable Zondo. He is hospitalized, so he's not able to attend meetings today. The other apology that we have is that of um, Honorable Van Staden. He is also um, hospitalized. He's not able to attend today's meeting. That should be all from my side, Chair. Thank you. Can you then go to the agenda, Ms. Martinez? Even if you cannot host it, just uh, talk to the agenda. All right, Chair. Today we are having a presentation from our legal advisors, one from uh, Parliament and the other one from the State Law Advisors Office. So they should be presenting to the Portfolio Committee an A-list of, of the expropriation bill. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that basically means they the, the legal advisors would um, let us know as of to what it is exactly that um, has been pinpointed by the public based on the submissions, written, oral, and public hearings, what has been submitted by the public, um, citing what it is exactly that um, needs to be needs to be uh, amended on the expiration bill. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Ms. Martinez. Then over to you, Ms. Pumalele. Greetings, Chairperson, and greetings to all the members on the platform. We appreciate the opportunity, and we trust that we'll be assisting the committee to all the endeavors that at this stage we are at. Chairperson, just to preface our presentation, we are going to be doing it together, myself and Advocate Van Breda from the Office of the Chief State Law Advisor. 
I will do the first part because there are about 26 clauses in the bill that out of the deliberations of the members and all the considerations of written inputs, oral submissions that were done by the public and the provincial visits when the committee was consulting, we were trying to, 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 to find out what exactly the public would prefer to see in terms of this draft legislation. So the proposals, as, as I've said, there are 26 clauses that we'll be likely looking at. They are trying to take into account all that was said and all that the members eventually deliberated and sort of gave a direction as to what should be in the amended bill. And in speaking to that chairperson, the committee would recall that parliament is a creature of statute and therefore we must follow the rules and the constitution and any other statute that is guiding the process of the committee. That is why then today the committee will be considering proposed draft amendments because the committee must still consider it, deliberate on it, and then only then once it has the approval of the committee can we convey it into a proper proposed amendment a list of the committee for now it is merely a draft which we've taken out of all the deliberations and the guidance while we were listening it has been a, a rough a rough a rough journey chairperson trying to consolidate and find the the lawful answers to all the deliberations and ensuring that they are constitutionally viable and they will pass constitutional master and we, 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 it's also been a, a situation very interesting and um, not usual in the sense that we got extra assistance because the department um, was, was, was utilizing the legal aspects in terms of the councils that the committee is aware of. Um, so that said, Chairperson, the product that will be flighted for members to see as a draft A list is a product that has arisen from the deliberations, from the involvement of the department, as well as guidance and legal input from the councils themselves, as the committee is aware that there were two opinions that the legal councils from the department presented. So, Chairperson, I will go right straight into the presentation. Um, two options we can do uh the, the the assisting owner of the platform may may put the the document that we submitted to the support staff so that we take through the members which we had put it on pdf or i can use a web document on my side may i have the one that was sent to the members put up please uh, so that we we speak to what the members also have on their side if it was already submitted. I don't remember, I don't recall receiving anything from your side, uh, Ms. Pumedele. So can you please just flight it? Okay. No, she please. must not just flight it, Nola. She must send it to us. We don't have any document. We waited, waited, waited till this morning. We don't have a document from you. Can you then ensure that at least it is uh, sent to Nola? Nola will share with us. As much as we see it from the screen, we are also able to take notes seeing it from our other gadgets. Can you please do that? Um, uh, thank you, Chairperson, for that, because I was under the impression it did go through. I did experience some uh, connection problems with my Outlook, so maybe the problem still persisted. Um, but Chairperson, perhaps uh, I would ask Advocate Van Breda to share that one uh, while I, I continue, um, rather than putting the committee on hold while I try and do that, if that is okay, Chairperson. Okay, it's fine. Um, okay, uh, sorry, Che, um, do I have the rights to, to share my screen? Yes, sir. so you've got a uh, co-host as well. Okay, thank you. Sean, I, I was asking if you could share to, to, to Nola 
uh, the, the via email. Okay, then I'll, I'll stop sharing mine. Um, Chairperson, I'll continue why uh, Advocate Van Breda is assisting me in this regard. I would have thought I was I was going to share mine, but I'll continue talking so long because on my side I don't see anything yet. Um, Chairperson, on clause one. Sean, are you able to flight the, the screen? Let me try as well, Chaperson, on my side to put it up. Can members see my screen now? Yes, Pumalele, um, I've just sent the the A list to to um, to Miss Martinisse. Yes, I don't know if she's received it yet. Uh, usually, our emails are also a bit delayed. Sean, please do also put up because I think on my side I'm I'm, I'm picking up only the old ones. Okay, we we'll just do that. Thank you so much. Chairperson, um, members would recall that various uh, provisions under clause one on the definitions had to be had to be reconsidered. In terms of the structure, Chairperson, we won't start with the long title in terms of the structure and the drafting um, and the drafting style and, and conventions. So I will go straight to clause one and then the long title, which also has been, uh, is, is receiving proposed amendments will be dealt with at the end once we are done with all the clauses. Chairperson, in light of clause one and all the definitions that would, would require to be amended, um, the first one, if members do have a copy of the bill as well in front of them, we are on page five. We are on page four of the bill under chapter one, definitions and applications of act. The first definition that we will we, we, we have after the deliberations uh, amended is the definition for claimant, which is going to be inserted as claimant means a person who has lodged a claim or made a counter offer for compensation. And perhaps a brief explanation how we got to that Members would recall that when the councils were, 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 were presenting their opinion, they suggested or proposed a, a three-pronged process which involves the investigation as well as the during the investigation when a lot of information would be ascertained from likely parties that will be affected by the expropriation. And only after that investigation stage, a decision to expropriate is then made with notices that must go to the relevant um, parties that are going to be affected. Hence, there is now a proposal when we go through 
that will propose a stage of counter offering between the offer that will be presented by the expropriating authority, hence this new definition, Chairperson. The second definition that is, um, is, is proposed for amendment as well, in light of the, in light of the deliberations, is court. The, 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 the members would recall that, Chairperson, there were, there were discussions on removing magistrate and keeping magistrate and discussions to make it clear whether this bill is only speaking to land as a, as a property to be expropriated, or it's also generally speaking as expropriation, and it was explained, can, can, can amount to any type of property and in light of case law that was spoken to when members were, 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 were assisted in giving definitions and understanding of the law in this matter. So in terms of the court, Chairperson, we have proposed this definition that a court will mean a division of the high court or a court of similar status. And the similar status, we were attempting to take into account the process that are engaged with by the Department of Justice, as well as the Portfolio Committee on Justice, as members would know, there is a land court bill that is being processed by a relevant committee before Parliament as well. So in order for us not to leave that out in case it's necessary that perhaps matters may go to that court and the system once finalized would then, the, 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 the addition of a court of similar status would enable without any further amendments, the utilization and an enabling provision that such courts are actually involved in this, in this, in this definition. And that is the intended purpose of this bill to include a court that is a court having a high court status and therefore any division of high court as we know that each province has its own high court but there is generally one high court of south africa with various divisions and hence we provided this definition to be generally brought in that sense and then it will then clarify clarity in terms of jurisdiction it's a court of division of the high court uh, or a court of similar status within whose area of jurisdiction A, where the immovable property in question is to be expropriated is situated. B, in light of the, in, of the movable property or intangible property, we are saying where the movable property in question is situated at the time the expropriating authority implements section five or 22. And section the, these sections, clause five or clause twenty-two, the members would recall that um, clause five is a provision which is the stage of investigations and gathering inform information for purposes of expropriation. While clause twenty-two was the one is the one that speaks to agent expropriation, which is why we've made a direct reference to those provisions. Thirdly, in order to highlight and, and provide a solution to the issues that were raised in light of using the word intangible and why it was used, as councils did explain that property in terms of section 25 is beyond just land, then jurisdiction would also involve the owner of the movable or intangible property in question where they are residing or where they are conducting their business. That is the proposed definition for court. Um, can we move to the next one, sir? Then, Chairperson, um, if we go through the definitions as we see them in the bill, the next, the next definition that require that it be amended um, is the definition of date of expropriation. We had various deliberations on this as the support legal team in this instance, and eventually in light of the deliberations again, we thought that it would be best to omit the definition of date of expropriation, number one, because it, it, it sort of as it stands was bringing content in the definition, which is not supposed to be like that in terms of drafting, but then also 
in light of the provisions that we will be proposing when we get to the provisions itself, there are two dates that may impact the date of expropriation. And that is why then we are feeling, instead of bringing more details at the definition stage, let's rather not do so to comply with the principles relevant, then we will correct what needs to be done in respect of what the definition was bringing it will be done in the content of the bill. So the definition of date of expropriation, we are suggesting that it be omitted, but the details will be clear in the content itself of the relevant provision. Then Chairperson deliberations on deliver, where, where members would remember, and what we have done in light of those, and to make sure we cover everything. There's already an existing act which is called the Electronic Communications and Transactions Act, which speaks to how electronic communications can be used. And we've also seen even during the pandemic how that act was used for purposes of proceedings in courts. And that's why we've given this definition to take into account all the concerns and, and, and what the members and the public were saying in light of this. We have said deliver means in relation to any document includes a delivery by hand, post, registered post, and by electronic communications as defined in section one of the Electronic Communications and Transactions Act 2002, Act number 25 of 2002. Furthermore, Jefferson, this one was merely from the drafters uh, department because we are saying we have seen in the past that normally the, 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 it's the prerogative of the president to give or identify or merge or separate departments from the portfolios. And it has happened uh, various times in the past. And it is always best to rather deal with the function rather than deal with the portfolio name. So we are suggesting that department rather be defined as the department responsible for public works and infrastructure. In light of the disputing party and the earlier definition on claimant chairperson, we have suggested because of the changes that we are proposing and we will be explaining to the committee, we have suggested that disputing party also be, be amended to read as thus. Uh, disputing party means an owner mortgagee, holder of a right, and in the case of agent expropriation as contemplated in section 22, which uh, my, my, uh, we've put both just to clarify the point that section 22 is about agent expropriation, and it's also included in the processes should a dispute arise. The expropriated owner or expropriated holder who rejects the expropriating authority's offer of compensation or whose counter offer the expropriating authority rejects. This would also be clear why we are bringing in counter offers because there is a proposed new provision to change the other one in light of the three pronged process that council suggested where we are providing for the process of counter offering between the parties in order to to, to try and get to agreement that the constitution requires prior to taking the matter to courts where they cannot find one another. Um, and then the next one, Jefferson, is expropriated holder. What it means uh, for the definitions that I'm not speaking to on the A list uh, in, in, in the existing bill as it stands, it means we are not changing anything or the deliberations did not suggest or propose that we speak to anything. Should members be worried why I'm not speaking to all of them? So on the A list and what I'll be speaking to, it's only those definitions that require to be changed. Uh, if you can move down, sir. The definition of expropriated holder. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, because Chaperson, there is um, the definition of expropriated holder and the definition of holder of a right. Um, a, a bit up, Sean. One of the two, 
um, need to, to come out because we felt that Tepesin is a repetition of what the other is saying and there's confusion. So expropriated hold that definition would just, if it's used in the bill, will assume its ordinary meaning and, and, and holder of a right, we are giving a, 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 a full detail as to what we mean, because we felt that perhaps that is the one creating confusion because it's speaking to unregistered and registered rights and all that. And in terms of the of the explanation and the legal opinion that council gave the committee, there was a, a clear indication that the definition of owner, expropriated holder, expropriated people that are holding rights that are not registered, there were issues. And this is solely one of the ways we are trying to correct and make sure that there is clear clarity in such matters. Um, and then that definition of expropriated holder in the bill will come out, Chairperson, if the committee so approves. And then the next definition, Chairperson, that is, is, is proposed for changes is the definition of expropriating authority. This is in light of all the discussions, Chairperson, and the issues that were raised and, uh, were raised, and we are saying expropriating authority should mean an organ of state or person empowered by this act or any other legislation to expropriate property or to bring about the compulsory acquisition of property contemplated in section 24 of this bill for a public purpose or in the public interest. This definition seeks to take into account all the case law that has spoken about these issues seeks to take into account and bring clarity that the organ of state has been also defined in the constitution, but case law has also sort of brought more details into what it means. But we are saying if as an organ of state, you have been empowered by this expropriation act or any other legislation because the power must be enabled by, um, by, by legislation, which is why we've then contained the definition of expropriating authority, bearing in mind that the expropriating authority is not necessarily only the minister in terms of this bill, the minister of public works, but other statutes are also enabling other members of cabinet or the executive or other organs of state as we would see and know. Hence, the definition is broad enough to encapsulate all parties in terms of law and in terms of our constitution as the supreme law of the country. Then the expropriation definition as well, Chaperson, is to be amended in light of the amendment to the expropriation authority as well as in light of the issues that were, quite, were, were, were raised around compulsory acquisition of property, as well as where acquisition is not necessarily possible when it's a matter for third parties um, benefit that expropriation is taking place. Thus, we have said expropriation means the compulsory acquisition of property for a public purpose or in the public interest by an expropriating authority or an organ of state upon request to an expropriating authority and expropriate has a corresponding meaning. The next one, Chaperson, as I said, is holder of a right against the definition of expropriated holder and against what the content of the bill then in relevant provisions will be presenting to the committee today. The holder of a right would mean the holder of an unregistered right in property, but excludes an unregistered owner. Because our council, the, the, the councils from the department did explain that there are rights in property and there is property that does not necessarily require registration by law. And this is why we've provided such a definition here in. The next one, Jefferson, for clarity and also in line with what we explained about high courts and their division is the master. 
the master of high court and if we've abbreviated it to just mean master it means the master of the high court for the division within the necessary with the necessary jurisdiction where the property in question is so that's basically the clarity this uh, amendment seeks to bring uh, let's go sean The next definition, Chairperson, um, what appears now is also changes that I have already explained in respect of owner, but because we are not removing owner in its entirety, it will just it will just deal with specific parts, Chairperson, where. In line 27, if the members do have the bill, it, it's a definition of owner, where owner reads where the ownership of the property or right in question is registered. Mm -hmm. And what we are intending to do here is to, is to bring clarity uh, and, and remove only registered, but deal with owners both uh, as known in terms of common law and statutory law. So what we are saying, it means the owner of property at common law, and then we will remove the parts that would, would have created confusion. And what is done here is just done in line with how the, the conventions require us to draft. But it's... it's, it's the... Yes, sir. My apologies, Chair. Good morning to, to the members. My apologies to interrupt the, the presenter. But Chairperson, <clears throat> we didn't receive the report. Uh, but the, in fact, all of us as members, we didn't receive this, this document. But I like to probe to to propose to stop today so that uh, we can go and analyze the report at home. Otherwise, it's not assisting us today. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chabo. Honorable Grandmary. Chairperson, uh, I'd like to honorable, uh, I'd like to respectfully disagree with Honourable Njobo. At the end of the day, we've all worked through this bill. We understand what the bill is. Um, we should have a copy of the bill in front of us because we've been provided with that. There's enough documentation for us to be able to source our own information to correspond with the discussions. And we can always ask for clarity. Today's just an explanation. Um, and we can always go and do additional work afterwards. But I think to postpone this meeting on the basis of us having we've We've accepted late um, receipt of documents throughout the year, and we haven't postponed any meetings as a result of that. So um, I think if we do that, we're going to we you know we we creating a problem for ourselves because then um, it throws the rest of our program out. And um, there's no ways that we are not in a position to be able to follow what's being said by by the presenter. Um, thank you, Honourable Prime Minister, Honourable Shabalala, Honourable Matebula. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, I will not open the video because my 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 network is so bad in ladies. I would like to agree with the honorable job. We cannot just sit and pretend that we are following because we must be at our best when we're dealing with this. It has got legal check-ons. And it's a technical, it's a legal technical document that needs our time. In fact, we need to have this and both this document in our own way of how we, we, we go through the document. Some of us would like even to go through the document in a in a not in a, a an electronic a, a version of it. So can we be given that space? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Shabalala, Honorable Matebula, and Honorable Suisa. I've noted you after Honorable Van Scalvi. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Well, I fully agree, uh, first of all, with the, the whip of the committee as well as uh, Honorable Shabalala. Yeah, we have to make an uh, informed uh, decision, Chair. 
we cannot just uh, rush things and uh, take decisions when we see that uh, that is going to negatively impact uh, on the decision that we are going to take at the end of the day. Because we must remember that this bill, it has got, uh, it's not about us only as the committee, but it has got everything to do with the interests of which need to be protected. So it is therefore very important that if we are raising a matter to say, we think that we are lacking information here, and as such, we need an opportunity to go and explore or find information that we think is going to be relevant. It will assist the committee in arriving at the right decision. We must be allowed to do so as, <clears throat> as the component of this uh, comp uh, of this uh, committee. Um, uh, uh, hence, my, my, my support and also the, the fact that uh, we need to be given a uh, time to go and get more information in Uh, thank you. Honorable uh, Franz Kalvik, Honorable Matibula is experiencing network challenges, but we got uh, what you were trying to say. Honorable Franz Kalvik, over to you. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, and good morning to our Chairperson, our members and staff members. Chairperson, I'm sufficiently being covered by the previous uh, speakers. Uh, it is extremely unfair on us uh, and it won't uh, push the baby of the bed or out of the bath water if we postpone uh, the, this presentation and the discussions. Because at the end of time, uh, uh, Chairperson, this bill is supposed to, to, to stood the test of time. And if we rush any process, it will, will uh, disadvantage some and advantage some. So we shouldn't uh, play on, on, on uh, uh, and, and, and uh, downplay others' opinions. Uh, if one person feels comfortable to proceed, it doesn't mean it should uh, 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 obviously be the that is uh, the, the feeling of the majority. And therefore, I agree with Honorable uh, Njobo's proposal that we postpone so that we can give us ourselves sufficient time to deal with this uh, proposals. Uh, we also want to propose that uh, the anything that the state law advisor uh, uh, prepared should also be given to us so that we are in a position to properly prepare ourselves for the next meeting. We can't be taken for granted at this as this members of this portfolio committee because it's happening with us in terms of the department. It has happened with us in terms of, of this bill and we should stop it now. And this thing shouldn't prevail and there should be a lesson, and I also uh, propose, Chairperson, that a report should be uh, 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 compiled and sent to the Chair of Chairs or our Superiors of Parliament so that uh, uh, this matter be, be brought to the fourth. And uh, because this is also assisting us or hampering us in effectively dealing with our oversight function, even in terms of, of the departmental reports. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Franz Karvik. Honorable Suiza? Honorable Suiza? Thank you, Chair. Uh, the, the Chairperson, I don't, uh, you, you know, I have a serious problem with, with, with whatever that, that says public works and infrastructure. I mean, just last week, we were complaining about documents not arriving on time or documents being delivered or amendments being made and we get an amended version of whatever report. And now this morning, we are already in the middle of the meeting and then that's only then the document arrives to us because it arrived with our researchers and the staff of, of, of the committee in the middle of the night. And it's really unfair because at the end of the day, we can't do our job very competently because we all need, everybody's interested in the expropriation bill. And if 
for now we are going to engage in things that we don't know then you are going to have a problem because now we have to flesh through because we know when reports are given there are those gray lines that are not spoken about and we, those are the gray lines that we need to have the documents before time so that we should be able to go through those gray lines that are not spoken about. And then we ask relevant questions pertaining the bill or whatever document. So I don't know if this thing is only done with the Committee of Public Works or it's done all over all the other committees, but it seems as if it has become a trendsetter that when it comes to Public Works Committee, People can take it for advantage that, no, those ones, you can send the documents in the morning. Nobody's going to say anything. And it's only fair that this, we need to postpone this meeting so that everybody can peruse through the documents and make so that we should be able to ask informative questions and make informative additions into the bill. But at this moment, we are just, we are trying to listen, we are trying to read. Some of us, you are reading through the iPad, you can't even follow correctly because of, you don't know what are the great pictures that you are missing. And it's, 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 it's very vital that we know what we are talking about. What is the legal, uh, legal department of parliament talking about? Or else you are going to rubber stamp or some of us are going to have to answer to questions that we don't know anything about because of we never went through the document. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Sousa. Thank you uh, to all the honorable members for their input on this. Um, the reality is that, um, in fact, we told you, Ms. Pumalele, when you started that you don't have the document mm -hmm. that you are reading from, that you are dealing with. Um, and in fact, till late afternoon, uh, Ms. Martinez was saying that uh, you are not ready. You are still dealing with the document. And today you are here. See, now we don't have the document, we just got it now. I think all the members that are saying that we must postpone this meeting, we will. We are definitely postponing the meeting. We will look at the date, um, not uh, postpone other meetings that are following, but we will look either for Friday or for uh, Tuesday uh, when we can have the special meeting to deal with this. Uh, what is good about this bill? There is no um, cut-off date for it, but it is uh, crucial that it sees the light of the day in Parliament. That's one thing that we are committed, as all the members of this portfolio committee, to ensure that it happens. But uh, we can be informed, and we have to read, we have to comment. We are, we are told now, this is this, no, that that one can't be correct. So on those words, I formally agend the meeting we will then nola will communicate with you when are you expected to come back uh mr sean if you have any other document other than the one that is being presented by uh, miss kumalele in this meeting please ensure that it reaches nola's hands today so that we also get that document thank you uh, to all those that were listening and to all the honorable members the meeting is adjourned thank you Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Chair. It's a single document that we, we, we worked on together.